Hello, this is Toby Barris for DMAnswers.com. Today I'd like to talk about multivariate SPC. This is a useful technique when you have metrics that are correlated with one another. And so I'm going to use a data set that I got from an R package called MSQC um, that has correlated inputs. And we'll see if the, the multivariate SPC charts can be helpful to show a signal um, where the individual um, SPC charts um, do not show a signal. So let's go ahead and just delve right into this. Um, this uh, data set is bimetal one in case, and you can look it up over the MSQC um, package um, in R. But this is basically um, a situation where you have a thermometer that's been constructed by two, putting two different metals um, together. And they have physical characteristics because they expand and contract at different rates because of the differences in the metals um, that you can determine what temperature it is. Um, we have some data collected here for the, this particular thermometer, the deflection, the curvature, resistivity, the hardness on the low side and the hardness on the high side. And we're going to see if we can, well, first of all, I'll show you the plots of the, the, the individual SPC charts for each of these metrics. And then we'll use the multivariate SPC, um, which is right here under statistics, to see if uh, the, the multivariate SPC charts can detect something that the individual SPC charts cannot. So let's go ahead and I'll just look at the, I'm going to spare you the, you know, showing you um, me actually do this and just show you the output. So here's the deflection SPC chart. Uh, here's the curvature. Um, here's the resistivity, the hardness low side and the hardness high side. And so I hope you can see that there were no red points. Um, there's nothing outside of the three signal limits. It doesn't appear there's any patterns, any shifts or trends. And so it, it would appear that uh, these individual SPC charts are not indicating that there's anything out of control. There is not a special cause being indicated by these individual SPC charts. Let's go look at the uh, multivariate SPC charts that are available. The first one we'll look at is the hotel and T-squared chart for individuals. Uh, the upper control limit here is 20, and there's nothing that's going beyond that. And so hotel and T-squared is not saying that anything's out of control either. Um, you also have the multivariate exponentially weighted moving average chart. Um, this is uh, advantageous when you're trying to find small deviations away from the mean. And it looks like here that we're not seeing those small deviations. It's staying pretty well centered around the mean. Uh, so there's no trends away from the mean. The multivariate QSIM chart is another chart that detects small deviations away from the mean. And again, it's telling us the same thing. There's nothing that's out of control. So you might ask yourself, well, maybe this is not the best data set um, because we would hope that one of these multivariate SPC charts would have of, of shown a signal if they're, um, because of the, we believe there is a correlation. And so there, but maybe it's just we got unlucky and the time that we were um, collecting this data there was nothing that was out of control. But let's go back and just verify that there truly are correlations, because maybe we that's the problem, but there truly are correlations. So it seems like that it would be appropriate to do these multivariate SPC techniques. And it's just that we've gotten lucky and we don't have an example here where there's an out of control point um, for the multivariate uh, that you did not see in the individual SPC charts. But Let's just go for, for fun, or maybe just for out of curiosity. Let's just look at the hardness high side versus the, versus the curvature. It has an 85% correlation. And so what I did is I did a scatter plot of those two variables against each other. And then I put a 95% ellipse around it. Uh, you'll notice that there is this one data point right here, um, number 20, that is um, outside of that. Um, if I go back down here to the hotelings t square chart, and I just include those two um, variables, the hardness on the high side and the curvature. Um, there is one that's a little bit higher, it's number 20, but notice that it's not even close to the, the threshold here for the lower upper control limit. So um, this might be inappropriate to use a 95% confidence limit on the ellipse. Um, this might be a little too sensitive. Um, 
maybe we could just go back and try that and just say, well, we want a 99% um, coefficient for the ellipse and see what happens there. Um, and it looks like that doesn't really change that much. Uh, so it might just be that this uh, ellipse is a little more sensitive to detecting um, variability um, for these correlated uh, metrics. And so if we do find that this uh, particular um, thermometer, number 20, ends up being abnormal as we track these things in the future, we might give us motivation to use this method of using the ellipse as compared to the other uh, multivariate SBC charts. But nonetheless, um, I, I feel bad. I was hoping for an example where um, we would see the signal in the multivariate SPC and not see it in the individual's charts to motivate using those charts. I think that it's still appropriate here. It's just that we don't have the data to show that today. So thanks for, for watching. And I hope to, in the next two weeks, to find a data set that we can use the predictive quality control uh, method that's right here. And I, so I look forward to, to seeing you back in a couple of weeks and we can talk about that then. So see you later.